by saying how mm-hmm. crazy the off season was leading into the game. Yeah, I mean it's the week before. Do you remember that? Oh well, yeah, with Ames and Iowa City were like the two two worst COVID per capita cases in the, in the world. States? In the world, the world. Yeah. So that was. So I think prior to that, Jamie was planning on having fans, and there's an outrage over it. Well, I I don't know when you see the there's an article that you're the one of the worst towns in the world for this pandemic. It's your hands are pretty tied, but. Yeah. Even even like I don't know I didn't I didn't think anything of it having no fans to be honest I think it did actually play a really big role in how the, how the game went. But I think the bigger thing is, like the the months leading up to the season where we weren't allowed to like fully practice as a team. Yeah, and before there was COVID issues during our program, in the earlier in the like in August, right before the season started, fall camp. That's why we didn't really have many COVID problems the rest of the year because we kind of basically got rid of all the – because so many guys got COVID, I, I heard. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that many players got it. Though. Yeah, so, like, we could – players didn't practice. Lots of players didn't practice. That's why we look so much sluggish. It was – the Big Ten was still not playing. Oh, the Big Ten were, was two months away from playing. Yeah, the Big Ten was out. It was – I was excited for football being back. Um, it was very strange seeing, like, no fans. It was, like, a very eerie feeling. Well, I feel like we spent all of August, like, not even knowing. Like, I I feel like personally I was just, like, expecting the report to come out that all football had been canceled for the year. Thankfully, like, we had the season, and obviously the deeper we get into the yeah, like, thinking back on it, like, I was like, I'll believe there's college football when Iowa State takes the field and takes the first nap, and then – yeah, and that ha- it finally happened. Charlie Corler was out. We didn't find that out till kickoff because he had a sports hernia. So oh, in I didn't surgery. realize Charlie didn't play. I didn't yeah. even. Yeah. When the game went on, I didn't really realize it. Yeah, we went. We went back and watched it. We're gonna go over all the games leading up to the season. This will be episode one of that. So I guess it's, it's worth noting that we are now on Saturday officially one football season away from football. Yeah. And Twelve weeks. We've been counting. I've been. Doing a highlight of every day for like I don't know how seventy long. days or something. Yeah, it's, it's been tough kind of finding highlights, but it's it's been fun. We're getting there. I mean, yeah, that's where I mean, twelve weeks away. Like, think about how fast the football season goes. So I think if for everyone listening, we're gonna do recap each game one a week, and there's tw- we had twelve games last year, so we'll yeah recap I, the last one the weekend before the U and I game. And I was, so, just, I was listening to Psycho Fanatic and Brett Bloom pl- pointed out we're closer to football season than we were to when basketball season ended. So we're getting, we're getting close. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, yeah un- unfortunately, this is going to be a, a bit of a bummer to, s- yeah, to like start just, out. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a bummer for sure. We were at Lagos. Uh, yeah, shout at, out Lago. Shout out Lago and Emily. It was a really great food. Great food. Great environment. The, everything was great. The, the dog, they had a puppy. They just got a puppy. Yeah. Shout out Maggie. Um, also, shout out Austin Hillbrands. He was also there, I think. Was he not there? No, it was just us. Austin texted me. He, he was disappointed with how little of a shout out he got on the oh, really? story of our fandom. So I just wanted to give him another shout out. So. Sure, yeah, like going into the game, it was such a, no fans. The band, they scared the band around. Like they played, the band played like Boomer Sooner. Like, you know, like Oklahoma plays Boomer Sooner yeah. every other play. That's what. We just I, played the fight song over we played the and fight, over. Yeah. We cranked up the sirens as, long, as much as we can. I mean. And I mean, I, you go back and watch the game like it's it's bad, but I, there are some really key moments that are why we lost. Yeah. Um, so I guess diving right in um, our first possession. I don't know. Like, I, I, just, I think the theme today, like we'll, we'll talk about is like Brock looked off. Yeah, it was he, just... he was he was missing throws. Timing was off, which was something that we hadn't seen from Brock in his career. Like Brock is will go down as probably the most, or he will go down as the most accurate quarterback in the history of Iowa State. Um, and like they're pointing out in the broadcast, how he he uh, he was the second most like percentage wise completion the year the year before, and the first was Trevor Lawrence, and it was just like the, the who's the Mike Mike and Mike guy Mike Golick Mike Golick kept pointing out how we just looked off, the receivers are off. And I think it had to do with the timing of not practicing. You could see that between the like the first couple of weeks, you can see that in the game. 
Yeah, for some. sure. And but I think also a huge part of it was sure, like the practice was off, but Brock had played with most of those guys for two years. But our main target How'd used you was Xavier, who was new. Yeah. So like Xavier had not really had any time to work with Brock aside from like the two weeks of practice prior to the game. And you could just tell, like, Brock and Xavier the entire game were not on the same page. And, like, I wrote down first position, third and six, Xavier is wide open, Drops and it. Brock just yeah missed him. Yeah. It was like it was a off throw. And so, like, I don't know. It, it was a bummer. I just remember, like, going through the game, I never was questioning whether we were going to win. And, like, in the first half, like, we looked okay. Like, the offense, like, showed signs of, like, when they wanted to, they could move the ball. We just... That first possession, like, just miss on third and six, then you hit the punt. Um, but then I think on the opposite end, the defense played really good, incredible. Yeah. We, we were, like, coming up in the season, we were, like, the offensive, uh, defensive line, Jaquan Bailey's coming back, Will McDonald would pl- show it out to the end of the year, season before and comes in, hits two sacks in this game. And Bankston, we had Bankston. Yeah, so Banks had a great game too. Bankston had a lot of hype coming in the season. And yeah, it was what which to go back to Brock, when you lose your safety net and Charlie Kohler, it really affected him, I feel like. And we we really didn't we knew Brees was good, but he wasn't we didn't know how like I don't know if the coaches knew that he could be a Heisman. If he was the the best running back in the country. Yeah. And Yeah, we, I mean like but even Brees, like Brees didn't look great the first possession. The second possession, our first play, he fumbled yeah. in Iowa State territory. I think that was his only fumble the whole year. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, and so then that was kind of big because after he fumbled, he took like two possessions off where like Ken A played the whole next possession and then Johnny Lang split carries too. So, like, yeah. if Brees doesn't fumble, like potentially maybe he gets a goal in that second, the third possession. Um, there was no rhythm in the offense at all. No, but. Each year, Campbell always uses the first game to kind of keep everything close to the vest. Just hopefully that, like, hoping that our, our talent will kind of just get us the, the victory. And and we started, like, Iowa fans, like, grab at us for Louisiana. But Louisiana was legit good. They were good. Yeah, their quarterback was really good. Their running back was really good. Their returner, obviously, was really good. And their defense was good, too. Yeah. Like, they had some D linemen that are probably going to be in the NFL. Like, yeah, they they showed up. I f- it was just unfortunate. It was just a weird game. But also because then it was like it was like raining at the beginning, so it just like felt weird. Like, yeah. is it gonna get delayed? And, it, yeah. and like during the second quarter, the sun came out, and like that's when things started going wrong. Like, and there it, was, it was just yeah. weird the entire time. No but, crowd, like the electronic whistle. Electronic whistle too. Yeah, I I wrote that down. Like there was one play we had a false start. You faintly hear the whistle, and then the guy throws Brock to the ground. Like five seconds later. Yeah, and it was second and 18. And they, yeah. I feel like they just gave the pl- defensive players the benefit of the doubt because it was the first year, like first game they've ever had electronic yeah. whistles. Which, like, thinking back, the only reason they had electronic whistles because they were worried about spreading so, COVID saliva. through whistles. Yeah, which we, back then, we still were just guessing. Yeah, true. Like, people Thankfully, were just like, guessing. We'd... We're to a point now where, like, Cyclone, uh, Iowa State football mm-hmm. Twitter tweeted yesterday how we're going to have a full capacity. Officially. Officially a full capacity. And, yeah. It's, yeah that, it's, first, that first tailgate in game is going to be it's electric. Gonna, it's going to be electric, yeah. But going back to the game, so, like, first quarter, first session, miss on third down. Second possession, we fumble. In our own territory. So, like, they're, they're going in. I think they got to, like, inside our 10. Yeah. But then they missed the field goal. They missed a field goal? Yeah. Yeah. So, 0-0. Zero, zero. It's like okay, like we're we're doing we're hanging in there. So now that's the end of the first quarter. The second quarter, I can't remember where we were on the field, but we had two drops in a row, one on second down, one on third down, where they were both wide open. Yeah, and we pumped. To go, to go back, just to backtrack a little bit, Trevor Down gets hurt like yeah. the second drive, which they didn't talk about the no. entire game until like the third, the end of the third quarter. Like, oh yeah, Trevor Downing has hasn't played since. Because they were like the first possession, they were like going off about how great Trevor Downing had a great freshman year. Like he's yeah. like going to be the cornerstone of the offensive line. I don't remember. I don't remember the play he gets hurt on. Like they never yeah. cut to it. Like it was just it was never talked about. Weird. Which 
He's on the left side of the line. You watch the line the rest of the game. Like, the left side of the line got owned. Yeah, they struggled. Because um, Louisiana's D-line was good. Like, they had some big dudes. And Trevor Downing was so hyped up going into season two. Like, the year before, he was the pro football focus, like, the highest on the whole team. Yeah. And he was a, he's a dude. Freshman. Yeah. Yeah. And So he'll be a sophomore again next year. This year. So. Yeah. He, I'm excited for him to come back. Yeah, I think that's – yeah, I don't think that – I feel like that's one thing that's really getting kind of – I'll swept on the rug. Because, I mean, like, you have Brees, you've got Brock, you've got Xavier, you've got all these weapons, you got all the defense coming back. Like, Yeah, Trevor Downing's more talked about before the season la- – last year's season than Brees was, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, which is insane. But Trevor – I mean, Trevor's, like, Legit good. really good. Yeah. Like, he's going to be a huge addition. Like, on our offensive line, as the year progressed, like, really, really developed, had a really good year. But you're adding the most talented player – Probably by a good margin back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's like I think that's one thing that uh, fans will notice like right away when the United game like when we run to the left side like Actually, the holes are gonna be a little little bigger and Brees might be breaking a few runs. So yeah. So that's um, one thing that totally got. I didn't really watching the game back today. I'd never noticed that Trevor was gone, and then they didn't. Yeah, didn't mention it at all. Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. Just a weird day. Yeah. Yeah, so that, now second quarter, like we have those two drops, which drops were like the theme of the day. Like we just, even when they were open, like we just had guys dropping it consistently. Again, I think. Some of it was the perceiver. Some of it was Purdy. Brock was put, just a little off. He wasn't putting it right on him. Again, like, but it was also like they didn't have the reps. Like yeah. COVID totally ruined the fall camp and summer to, with that. Well, with Brock Purdy, it, when he's off, it's like only a little bit off. Like no, yeah, former Iowa State players like threw it way Yeah, off. but like the, this was – the mo- probably Brock's most off game of any game he's played. Yeah. Just consistently missing throws. Yeah, which, yeah. Which I, says a lot I, by him because, like, I usually, agree. like, accur- like accuracy-wise, he is like the whole, always on point. Like the whole game. Like, he had, he's had spurts where he's struggled, but usually, like, the Baylor game, he, in the first half, really struggled. But right. He but always, it was, like, always it was a combination back. of, like, I wouldn't say it was more – Accuracy. It was just like decision making. He was just making the wrong decision. Like yeah. Louisiana, he was making the right decision most of the time. He was just a little off, and you have you're a little off, and you get catch a, a team that's talented, but they also they just had a coach like pass away. Like they, yeah. it was a team that was really rallying around each other, and, and they it, were good. Legit they were good. good. They had, legit good, and yeah. some they must beat close to Carolina that year. Yeah, um, and just like to go back to Iowa fans, like some. Preseason polls I see have Louisiana in it and not Iowa. Really? So interesting. Yeah. So, so, like, so like going to second, they. So then we we have the two drops. We punt. Yeah. They go three and out, and then I write I, I write down in the middle of the second quarter. Brees gets it going. Like yeah, he's Brees. Mm-hmm. Just turn it on like 10, 15 yard rushes, and then he scores with four minutes and twenty seconds left. Or no, I think Kenny scores. Um, they get to like one yard line. Yeah, and then barely. Ten, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, almost scored. And then the next play, kick they, return, kick return for a touchdown. Yeah. So we're up seven zero four twenty left in the first half. Eight seconds later, it's tied. Yeah, I think the what I was watching, they didn't even put on on YouTube. Did they? Skip no, yeah, that? We, they skipped over. All of a sudden, yeah. it was seven seven. So I was like, okay, yeah. uh, we're we were rewatching it c- coming into this podcast. So like, yeah, that kind of confused me. Yeah, but then so then now it's tied. We get the ball back again. Brees is just he was probably the best player on the full, on the field. Yeah, we feed him a ton. We score again. Like the offense, like finally looked like they were figuring it out. Brock was playing pretty well that that possession too. And then I think like one of the biggest moments of the game was after we scored our second touchdown. There was like a minute left. And they drive all the way down, and we we force like a third and twelve. Yeah, like inside their own twenty. They convert, and then, like, we kind of go to prevent defense. There's, like, 40 seconds left. Mm-hmm. They just chip away all the way down the field, get inside our, like, 15, yeah. kick a field goal as time expires yeah. to go make it 10-14. If you look back at, like, in the game, I know we lost by 17, but, like, being down at some points we were down 10 versus being down 7. I mean, it's down 17, but you give up two special team touchdowns. Right, 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 right. Our, our defense played really, like, our defense didn't play perfect, but they no. Definitely... But I'm saying like that was the one that that possession was the one time the defense didn't show up. Yeah, like, but they only let letting them get goal. three points there with only a minute left was really really big. Yeah. 
And so then now we're we're on to the, the second half. Johnny Lang starts at running back in the second half. Really? Yeah. So he got two carries on that um that first first possession. The stupid whistles, Brock gets thrown to the ground. We get like a third and long. We convert, but then we also have a fourth down. We just could we And we failed the fourth down. So yeah, like then we have a couple three and outs. So I think we had four or five times where it was third or fourth down. We ran that we ran the play where uh, Charlie's usually in the slot. He just runs five to eight yards, turns yeah. around, we hit him. Yeah, it was like it was Sean. Chase Allen that entire time, and it wasn't always Chase Allen's fault where he'd drop it. Like, it was just like yeah, one the of the timing most. wasn't as like as good as what Charlie and Brock usually are, and it was usually good coverage. They threw it in a tight window, and Chase didn't make the catch. Like that was a lot of times where I think Charlie probably makes half those catches. And, like we can continue the possession. So I think that was one thing that again, like even with Charlie being out, like I feel like. The announcers really didn't talk about that much either. Like, no, I just mentioned it. Like Charlie was an twice. integral piece of the the year prior. So, like, yeah. again, I think that's like uh, another big issue if Charlie plays. Like, who knows how the game went? Like, it was just a perfect storm. Um, With Charlie going out, your best lineman going out, that's tough to start the f- first quarter. And our special teams could have played worse. Yeah, but yeah. So as fourth quarter, like we're still fourth quarter. We start. We're up fourteen ten. And then, and then we throw a pick deep in our own territory. Because yep. it was like Savior bobbled it, and then the DB just ripped it away. Like, we were – Purdy was in our end zone. Yeah. Throws it. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened. And then they missed the field goal. Yeah. So we're still 14-10. Yeah. So we survived, We dodged that bullet. The next possession, like on the 30, Rock rolls right, third and three, was looking, looking. No one there. Didn't get away, gets sacked. Now it's fourth and nine. Yeah. We punt. Still up 14-10. We punt the next play. They take it back for a touchdown. No. What? Like a 78-yard touchdown pass. Oh, yeah. Their slot receiver just ran by DJ Miller. Yeah. It, he wasn't a bold coverage because it was play action, but if you watch the replay, like DJ doesn't bite on the play action. Like he just – It was a – He misread how fast the guy was going. So he, Hell of a pass, too. It was a great pass, but like DJ didn't, didn't turn his hips fast enough. Yeah. So they score. Now we're down 17-14. We're like, okay, like – I remember, like that was like the time when we were watching. I was like, okay, like oh, okay, like we got we got to turn on because the offense hasn't looked great the entire time. But like, we still like we were more talented. We were just like waiting. Oh, for, for sure. We were waiting for, way more talented. We were just waiting for us to turn it on. Right, and, and it's but like, hard. It's hard when you're struggling and you have like BS going on. Like you're, as I said, Trevor got hurt, and Charlie's not playing. Charlie's not playing, and Brock's spe- off. Special teams, t- like we're off drop passes like we usually have our crowd there to pick us up and like special teams touchdowns it was just and like our sideline was no energy yep it was just a perfect storm we well, yeah, have obviously no fans too i think because like if there's a little fans i feel like at this point when we're down 17 14 that's when the fans would kind of got loud and it kind of picked us up and i think that would have helped refocus things but then i mean <laughs> look at this transition so pretty sacked on third and three next play they score a long touchdown our next possession, Chase Allen's wide open, dropped it, fourth down, punt, return for a touchdown. Yeah. So, th- and then going from sacked on third and three to the next play, long touchdown, to dropped on third down, to punt return for a touchdown, that's a 14 point swing. Now we're down 10. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. If the defense in the, at the end of the first half gets a stop, now we're only down seven. That's yeah. way different. Like, as far as like psyche of a team, like, if you're only down seven, like okay, like, like we'll just score next time. We'll be tied. We'll be fine. But going down from going from up four to two possessions later, like with only one play, Louisiana only had one offensive play. Yeah, they were up four. Now they're up yeah. ten. Yeah, it was. That's a huge momentum swing, especially when you're when a, a momentum swing that happens at home with no fans. Like the first like time, you're, just kinda, yeah. you're screwed. Like there was no way. To get picked up, and then from then on, we only had one more possession. It was just like we no fans. Like we didn't know. Like we or that was back when like the season could have just been canceled whenever. Yeah, we didn't. Right. It was like yeah, if we could have ended the season one zero oh and one, we were like okay, like that's crazy. It was so like, I it was, guess we had two possessions left. So kick punt return for touchdown. There's ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. We're down ten. That timeout miscommunication. On third down, we waste the timeout. Good coverage, incomplete pass. We punt. 
we hold him to three and out. So we, only a minute and 30 goes off the clock. Now it's 8.30 left. We had uh, Xavier beat his guy on the left side. Yeah. A little far, hit a dive, didn't catch it. Yeah. In, it would have been inside the 10. Yeah. That would have been to score to go down three. The momentum. Well, that would have shifted the momentum. And then we, it was the same play, Chase Allen, uh, Chase Allen slot, um, curl, don't complete it, fourth down. We turn over the ball on fourth down with like seven minutes left, and we don't get the ball back. And like, they just march it down the field, and they score 30 seconds left, and we lost by 17. And Campbell was, I feel like Campbell was so pissed off. He just, well, we also only had two timeouts. Like, it was just like, yeah. if he used the timeouts, they would have scored with like two minutes left. We still, we were still down two possessions. Yeah. That's, that's so, a, like, I just remember making a big deal about it when I was like, I can't believe he's not calling timeouts. And then, yeah. It's like, whatever. But again, like, but I, I feel like our team needed that loss. It, yeah, I mean, I, it really kickstarted our team to like come together and tighten things up because we, I mean, our special teams have struggled basically the whole year and still the, like the last game, but we didn't, they didn't have another punt return or even close to it the rest of the yeah. year after that. Yeah. And I, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think the, we needed the loss. I think if winning a game like that where you don't play well and like you get up played, but still win, I think the same result would have happened. We still had a really good year. But it did, I feel like, going 0-1 and, like, now instantly we're in Big 12 play, like, the pressure was instantly on. Yeah. And you have to go to TCU. Uh-huh. Which we can – we're going to talk about that game sometime. Yeah. But, like, so, th- I don't know. Like, it's an easy – it's a, an and like, easy it was a thing ge- for fans of other schools to make fun of us for losing to Louisiana. And, like, the if same – If you go back and watch the game, we didn't deserve to win. Like, oh. Our defense played exceptional except for that one possession at the end of the first half. I mean, Brock was just off. And, like – Prior to that, if Brock wasn't playing perfect, we would lose. It was like, like a it was like a Paul Rhodes kind of game, kind of. Our defense played pretty decent, or more than decent, and then our offense just didn't didn't. Not even, but we weren't going three and out. I think we only had one three and out. But so we, we our offense wasn't doing anything. Yeah, we just couldn't get past the fifty. Yeah, but like as far as totals for the game, like we outgained them. They outpassed us by nine yards. Brock landed one hundred forty five yards passing. We outrushed them. They had more yards per play, but they had two special teams touchdowns. And even on third down, we were seven for 16 on third down. We had 15 more plays than them. Same amount of punts. Only yeah. three penalties. Like, lost a fumble, lost a pick that neither of them led to points. Like, the ball, like, kind of bounced our way. Like, we just, like, seven of 16 on third down, like, looks pretty good. But, like, if you look at the third downs, we don't could. Convert like those were the ones we, we needed. Yeah, we did. We just need a couple big plays to happen our way, to to get to shift the momentum a little bit. All yeah. we needed is a spark, and it just didn't happen this game. Like, like saying broadly in the scheme things, like the whole season, Kenne's return kick returns coming. Like we didn't have one of those this game. Yeah, which like he saves, he shifted the momentum a lot in the season, and we needed something like that. And we did, or like, or for, we didn't force any turnovers either. Yeah, which Louisiana wasn't like, t- like uh, Ohio or no. But the thing is with Louisiana, like they had they had like athletes at the skill positions. They, and they had le- some big dudes on the line, both they, sides. They so won like, eleven games a year before. Yeah, and they only lost once or twice last year. Yeah, end of the season, like in the top fifteen. They play, yeah, they're play ranked like the whole year. Yeah, it's so like I don't know. It's not an embarrassing loss. I think like. Just on paper, you see, I would say loses loses to Louisiana. If you don't, if you don't, if you do no research, they have a good. That's coach. an embarrassing loss. They have a good coach. They have good players. Like they, the year prior, they had three players drafted. Yeah, more than us. Yeah, um, still their second win against a Big Twelve team. So if, ever the first first win against a ranked team ever. Yeah, on the road, and they only beat one other Big Twelve team. That Big Twelve team was Kansas. Yeah, it was tough, but, this but is it like, wasn't like a. I feel like years prior, where like Iowa State loses their first game, you're like, oh, season's over. Like this is a, another long year. Like we like we knew we had talent, but at the time, at like the we time. also we also lost arguably like two of the most talented players with Charlie and Trevor. Like, like, they'll, pro, like pro they, they'll probably have like the longest NFL careers of anyone on the roster. Yeah, that's a good argument there, but and just like looking back at the time. How deflating it was. The Iowa fans were 
annoying as hell after that game. They yeah, they I, couldn't even play. Like, but I mean, if you look at it from their point, like if flip it, if we were our conference decided not to play and okay. Iowa was playing, we would have done the same. It thing. would have been the same thing. Like, yeah. I felt bad for our fans because, like, at that point, they didn't think they were going to play at all. Yeah, that's that was like the. I mean, when you're as a rival school, like if your team's not playing, like okay, you just cheer against whoever's playing Iowa State. It's the same thing you do when people play Iowa. I'm just glad, like, I, as an Iowa State fan, I'm just glad it wasn't Iowa. Imagine if that was the Iowa game and we played yeah. that bad and no fans. That would have been terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, But then, I mean, like, thankfully, like, this is really the only sad recap we'll have to do. Like, There's a couple of ones Disappoint, that are, like, really, really, like, shockingly disappointing. Like, the Big 12 championship game, I guess, is disappointing. But, I mean, I Oklahoma's really good. Yeah, there might be a number one coming into the next year. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think it's it's a crazy to look back now, like especially like now that things are like opening it up and like COVID is hopefully like knock on wood, like in the rearview mirror. Like it's just crazy to think like the uncertainty of that time, our team isn't allowed to practice. There's no fans. Like it's just it's just wild how different in nine months things are now. So mm-hmm. I know our Iowa State just had their, I think they just wrapped up camp last week. Like, they're going into summer workouts. Like, it's going to be, we're on the way to normal. So, and, like, and I think with this team, like, if you give them a full off season, like, yeah. they're not going to, they're not going to be rusty week one. No. And they're they're going to be looking to beat you and I by 50. And, yeah, we can preview that game down the road. But what I saw of you and I in spring ball was not very good. Yeah. So, and, I think, and Reese is going to run for, like, 250 yards. Like, and, like, you and I is not as good as Louisiana. No, Louisiana is good. Like I, I yeah. don't want to play Louisiana ever again. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So I guess one thing to note, like during the game, like this was right around. What I think sports betting had just been legalized in Iowa, so yeah. like, we were just excited to like bet on Iowa State sports again. And again, like the I spent the entire game until mid fourth quarter. I was like doubling down. There's no way <laughs> Iowa State's gonna lose. So I just kept, I I think I spent eighty bucks on Iowa State money line. Yeah. So that was like that was just like a like after like after coming down from the loss, like going back to look at my account, I'm like, oh crap, like I actually lost all my money because And like going into that game, we were talking crap about the Big Ten, like, oh, we guys aren't playing, ha ha ha. And then and we lose, and then Kansas loses the Colts Carolina. And then like I said after the game, like, I kinda wish we canceled the season after that <laughs> game. That's how bad we played, but thank God we didn't. Thank God we didn't. I mean, can you imagine losing a season? Like losing a season with the players we have. Yeah, like, that's like losing the. Like, and every game we get to watch with these guys is such a gift to our fan base. And like, I don't know. It's just there's we're a fun team to cheer for. I think we're we're getting national hype right now, which normally is bad. But I think like the way Campbell carries his program, I don't Why think not? they give a crap like what they're saying. Like they don't. They're not watching that stuff. Like they're just going about their business. And he's assembled a great staff. He's assembled a great roster. This will be our deepest team by far. Yeah. Like we've got true freshmen that might play this year, like yeah. on a team that returns twenty of twenty two starters. I'm telling you, this 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 twelve week review is just gonna be a just small a exponential increase in hype. Like it's just yeah. gonna every time you look at a game from last year, I have no there's no evidence to think that this year's gonna be not, nothing but better. Like this is the only game that's not rewatchable, I feel like. Obviously, for obvious reasons. Yeah, Local, I mean, but Oklahoma game, Big Twelve change. But honestly, game. it's kind of nice to rewatch just to like to look at like the moments where like if things go a little differently, we could have won. Like it wasn't like a the game was out of reach the whole game. Like we were win we were winning until end of the third quarter, the start of the fourth quarter. And it's like nice to lose games knowing we're better than them, but yeah. like, like we're not used to that. We're right. Usually, like we, we we when we lose, like we meant, meant to lose. Yeah. But we just yeah. So it's we're. Iowa State's going through a transition of like we're expected to be good at football, and it's pretty fun. Yeah, it is. So this has been the first week of we have eleven more of these. Right? Eleven more. There's a lot, a lot more fun ones to listen to. So I think I, I would just encourage you guys um, before you listen to these episodes. Most of the games are on YouTube. Just watch the either watch the highlights or watch the entire game, and then kind of yeah. listen to what we have to talk about them. Cause I mean, I feel like we, we have the feelings of most Iowa state fans. It's just kind of nice to hear that you're not the only one that it's has just assessing over, um, just uncomfortable, unrational emotions about 
college college kids playing sports and I don't know. That's what I think makes Iowa State fans so special and yeah. And look out for some merch. Hopefully, we got yeah. I'm wearing I'm wearing the shirt. We're we're working out the kinks with getting them ordered and I'm yeah, trying to get uh, how how you guys are going to be able, able to order them. They're really nice shirts. They're really soft. I think they turn out really good. So hopefully. We'll have the supply here in the next couple of weeks to a month, and then we'll can't fun. wait to see you guys wearing them at, at tailgates. And yeah, it'll be fun. I can't wait. This can't is, wait. Yeah, this is this is this is the the lowest point of this recap, and it's still only, nowhere <laughs> to go but up. Only oh up, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, until next time, guys. We'll, All right, go clones. We'll recap the TCU game.